As to HSBC, why weren't its ex-bankers ever indicted? After all, collateral consequences doesn't apply to individuals, only to corporations. Lanny Brewer, moreover, confirmed that every HSBC executive who'd been legally responsible for the bank's crimes had been fired, thereby sterilizing HSBC from the effects of their prosecutions. The most senior people at HSBC, I should say, none of them, none of them who were involved in the underlying conduct are still at HSBC now. The failure to indict any ex-bankers is conclusive proof that collateral consequences, like the DOJ's prior excuse about insufficient evidence, is a false cover story. Something stopped the prosecutions of ex-HSBC bankers, and since it wasn't collateral consequences, and it wasn't the law, what was it? This remained a mystery until the House Financial Services Committee released a report in July of 2016 following a three-year investigation of the DOJ's failure to prosecute Wall Street. Not only do the report's exhibits answer the HSBC question, they answer the much bigger question of why the DOJ doesn't prosecute any too-big-to-fail banks. As it turns out, the problem with answering the $64 trillion question is the question itself. Goldman made false and misleading representations in its mortgage-backed securities. False and misleading? That's fraud. Who commits fraud? Crooks. Is anyone at Goldman Sachs going to jail for this? No. Why does this keep happening? As we shall see, that question puts the cart before the horse. The first question is what keeps happening. Once that's answered, the why is easy. What keeps happening is that cabinet members, including the Attorney General, enforce foreign legal immunities instead of U.S. law, so that a global banking cartel can commit crimes on American soil without restraint. These immunities come from the Bank for International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland, where a list of cartel members has been kept for over five years. Prosecutors were actually planning to indict HSBC when a mole inside the Justice Department tipped off the cartel which dispatched the U.S. Treasury Secretary to the DOJ with a stand-down order. The resulting deferred prosecution agreement contains four BIS immunities, including one that specifically shields ex-bankers. When we ask what keeps happening to bank prosecutions, these immunities are the answer, and they not only ripen the question of why, they answer it. Prosecutions are toothless because high-ranking government officials have extracted a nation's teeth with these immunities, all of which contradict U.S. law. While most of this is lost on the House, its criminal charges against the DOJ and the Treasury for covering up their actions in the HSBC case are 100% correct. But any notion that the new presidential administration won't continue the crimes of the last one is dead wrong. The DOJ has patted itself on the back over large settlements for years when it should have been asking what those numbers say about its role as both law enforcer and regulator. You're neither. You're an errand boy sent by grocery clerks to collect a bill.